first I want to start by thanking everybody for being here. I know that like there's a lot of things you could be doing on a Tuesday afternoon and educating yourself. I hope you've learned a lot today because you've had a chance to really deal with and learn from some fantastic resources. Um, I, you know, I popped in and out today and I've, you know, Lindsay Boggs and Kathy Burroughs and um, Eric um, from Techie Galaxy, all these guys were giving you really great, great ideas and things I hope that you'll find actionable and be able to take back to work with you tomorrow. What I'm gonna give you is it's called Making the Strategic Sale. And it's gonna be a little bit of a capstone for what you have learned today because it's gonna allow you to kind of put a big picture, uh, more high level view of some of the tactical things that, you're take, that take place for you. But before we get into it, I want to like take a look, step back and take a look at what you are dealing with currently. And that's if I'm telling you something that's wrong, you tell me. But a lot of undifferentiated call lists, a lot of reliance on gimmicks and giveaways and discounts that create challenges for you to be able to sell effectively. And there's a better way. And that's what strategic selling means to me. And we'll, for all of you, because I know you're here and you spent all day learning from people, it's a chance for you to show off your intelligence and your creativity. And because I like to make things super simple, it relies only on three simple questions that I am gonna make a promise to you and also a challenge for myself that I think you'll be able to use for the rest of your career. Just three simple questions that are gonna guide all of you, and I'm gonna move around a little bit so I can see everybody because I don't wanna just talk to one person and if so if I cut this off, don't mind me. But three simple questions is all that it takes to become a more strategic seller. And why is this important? Because in the world that we live in, attention is precious. That's why I wanted to make sure that I thanked you for being here because you know you, there's tons of other, com or other sessions that you could be at. There's tons of other people you could pay attention to. And that's the same challenge that you're dealing with when you're reaching out to your buyers and your customers and your prospects. It's like you're competing for attention with a world full of options. So three simple questions. So what's the first one? The first one begins as any say a strategy session, any sales campaign, any marketing campaign should begin with is what is the value that we are selling our clients and our prospects or that we want to create for our clients and prospects. So what does this value mean? A lot of us in sports fall into the trap of we are going to be selling a game and that's just not true because many times what we're selling is an experience. If you have a business-to-business -business buyer, you might be selling the opportunity to make a new business relationship. You may be selling the opportunity to have a connection with your family. You may be selling the opportunity to connect with a community. A story I think I was telling Brandon here the other night was about when I had supersonic season tickets when I lived in Seattle, and my, my stepfather got sick and passed away, and the community in my section, section 205, was tremendous. So you're often not really selling a game, you're selling an experience. So how do you, so what is that value that you're creating? And it's going to change because the people who are the buyers in the business to business in the premium sections and in the suites have a much different take on value than the people who are buying seats in the upper deck or people who are buying seats courtside. So the first question, what is the value that we create or want to create for our prospects and our buyers and our clients? That's question number one. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so, so then three simple questions. The second question, and they should go in this order. The second question is, who can use this and appreciate it and most importantly, buy it? Because I know if any of you are like me, people will gladly take a meeting with me or they'll have lunch with me or they'll take a conversation with me, but can they buy it? And then if we go back to what the current situation looks like, we have undifferentiated prospecting lists that have 150, 200 names on them that we need to call, but we have no other information, no idea if what we're offering them is valuable or not. So who can use it and who, more importantly, who will buy it? And that's gonna change because if you understand the value, then you know that like trying to call the CEO of the biggest company in your town to sell them an upper deck uh, nosebleed seat is probably not a good use of your time. It helps, um, I think jo uh, John back there was telling me about how, it, or well, somebody I was talking to earlier was telling me about how he stars his leads to help him understand who it is exactly that is going to be a valuable person for him to reach out to or an invaluable, uh, an unwise use of his time. So who can use your product, your service, your partnerships, your arenas, your anything you have, 
but most importantly, who's going to buy it? Because if you're spending time talking to people who cannot say yes, who don't agree with the value, who don't need the value, or who don't find value in what you're giving them, you might be able to have a call and you know, check it off on your box like, oh yeah, I made my calls and I talked to people, but it was a waste of your time because you're not ever getting closer to a sale, but you are getting on doing activity. And that's, that sucks because it demoralizes you, it doesn't help you meet your numbers, and you know, it, it's just a waste of time. So that's question number two. Who can use, the, use this value that we're creating and who will buy it? So then the third question is, and this is the longest part because it's the most fun, is how do we reach these buyers? I know if I ask a question, which I might, uh, of everybody and say, how many of you have a call quota that you have to make? I'm sure that every hand in here almost will go up. Um, <laughs> right. And, and what does that do to you? you, you you're probably burning yourself and giving yourself an inability to reach some of these people. So the, the fun part about how do I reach them gives you one thing that came up in a lot of the conversations I had with different executives and different sales managers was be creative and take a chance. If you're understanding that I have a certain subset of buyers who are good, uh, good prospects for premium seating, I'm gonna to wanna to reach them in a different way than I'm gonna to wanna to reach people who are selling, uh, that I'm selling to in the upper deck or who are sitting in the lower bowl. May, if somebody's gonna buy a full season, I'm probably gonna to wanna to engage them and talk to them and reach out to them in a different way. And so be, the, big, the big thing is to be creative. Um, my friends at the Marlins, uh, there's a gentleman named Ryan McCoy. Um, they had a fascinating uh, case study recently, about two years ago, where they used how many of you are familiar with Agile Project Management Theory? And they used Agile Project Management Theory to sell their premium seats. And what it was was they had sprints, and project management is two-week sprints. And in the sales process with the, the, floor, or the Miami Marlins, they used two-week sprints to reach people. And, that what the, and with some of their high-end, big-ticket buyers, they sent them bases with a Post-it note on them that said, I just want to get to first base with you. And that... <laughs> And that drove conversations. And that through the conversations, they, at the end of two weeks, they would have a buying event. And it was simply to force a decision, a yes or no decision, so that they could move on. And, and they did it over and over again. And each targeted um, demographic had a different trigger, a different way of engaging them. So be creative. Some of the things I've heard people talk about Oh, you know, even just over the past few days at the conferences, how they are able to use your facilities or how you're able to use your stadium. Or I see uh, Roy over here and he's got DC United. They have a new stadium coming up because this is right in my backyard. And there's a lot of opportunities there, right? Because the soccer fans in DC are, are really rabid. So there's, there's chances. Use these tools that you have. Um, again, because I'm in DC, the Nationals, Bryce Harper took over their Twitter account one day and he said, look, I'm sitting at this phone number. Call me and I'll sell you tickets. You know, use, use your assets because you have the most powerful and the most original content and the most unique content in the world. And you have some of the strongest brand identity and the strongest brand loyalty of any companies in the world. So I want you to use that. So th those are the three simple questions. It's what is the value I'm creating or want to create for my clients and my prospects? Who can use it and will buy it? And then how do I reach them? So then actions for you. I want to challenge you, right? And, I want, and everybody can easily find me. But my challenge for you is I want you to do things differently. I want you to think differently. I want you to, instead of just buying into making 150 phone calls a day off of a list, push your organization to look for different ways to reach people. Instead of it being, okay, well, we'll just run a small ad or a small email campaign, maybe you create your own list, your own email list of prospects and clients that you can email every day. Uh, my friend Nicole Source, uh, who's a friend of Troy's and mine, she couldn't make it today, but she did that. She's done that in the past, and she was able to sell tickets where she didn't even talk to people. Text messages. Get in touch with the people who can buy from you, and do it creatively, because the fact is, is people buy differently. They have different constraints on their times. They have different ways of wanting to be engaged with. So be creative in that regard. 
the other the other challenge is because you're sitting here, so I know that you care a lot, is when you, when you come up with something new, I want you to share it. Share it with the people around you. Because the best ideas that you're going to get are gonna be generated from learning from the people around you, right? I've been very fortunate that I have the opportunity to talk to, to people like you. And I have learned so much from all the people I've talked to. I want you to do that same thing because that's going to help you have ideas that are gonna help you reach more buyers better buyers, and it's gonna help you sell more. Now, does all that make sense? Now, and now I wanna, and now I wanna put people on the spot a little bit. So, so talk to me, somebody give me an example of some challenge of reaching a buyer that you have. Does anybody, my friend here that was laughing at me, talk to me. Yes. So we're still we're still on the phone okay. for, for certain, but there there are what we would call like blackout hours for sure, where we're not gonna be, where we're not gonna call people, or if we are gonna call people, it's gonna be incredibly like strategic on who on who we're calling and why that is. We're not gonna call a huge part portion of our business, for example, is Girl Scout troops, but we're not gonna call them in between. 10 and 2 during the summertime because those moms are probably off with their kids right now. Right. So it's more like having a blackout hour as opposed to another way of selling, right. if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and that's great because you, you, you know you've targeted your audience. Uh, and another thing is like... The Steelers, I know that uh, use these assets that ha you haven't been using very well. Brandon and I were talk discussing about how if you have a fan club or you have a, a digital fan club or a kids club, engage those people so they'll buy. You know, who, who has a really good example of how you've been able to reach somebody that you have always wanted to not reach? Or I mean, that you have wanted to reach and you haven't been able to get them through calling them on the phone or doing anything like that? And, and the reason I did that is that that just shows you there's two examples, right? You, you can have a, an hour, a blackout hour, so that you don't win, waste your whole day calling people that you know aren't home. Or you use the internet to reach buyers. And I think we talked about it last night, too, is about making sure that you keep a connection. Because a lot of you are dealing with colleges and universities and connecting with your alumni in creative ways, creating events where they can engage you, because then you can sell to them. So, and that's, that's what strategic selling is all about. It's all about identifying the value that you create because it is much, much different for each buyer and each demographic than you might think it will be. So, but understanding what the value is you want to create because it's going to give you an opportunity to capture a much larger audience than you possibly could if you just looked at everybody with the same set of eyes. The second thing is understanding who's going to use it and who is going to buy what you're selling. And this is incredibly powerful because the thing is is like we can spend all day long talking to people who can never say yes and I'm sure that if I just ask you to nod your head so that I don't necessarily make anybody raise their hands how many of you have wasted hours talking to people who in the end could never say yes and because you didn't understand that you didn't qualify them correctly and it's often on you know me or you because it's our job to do that and then finally, it's being creative in how you reach people. And for everybody who is here, I have a gift because that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, my friend Stu Heineke uh, is a Wall Street Journal um, award-winning cartoonist. He just wrote a book called How to Get um, a Meeting with Anyone. And he gave me a gift of 20 different creative ways uh, to give to you of 20 different ways that you can engage and touch uh, your, your prospects and your clients in unique ways from free ones like email and the phone to um, giveaways to speaking at conferences to gifts to there's 20 of them and if you're interested just give me your business card and I'm happy to give that to you uh, 
because I think it'll be a great resource when I talk about being creative. So be creative. Touch people in new and different ways. Use your athletes. Use your facilities. Grow your social media presence and allow people to touch you on social media um, in a way that you can create a meaningful relationship and you can convert those relationships into buyers. Look for buyers in different places. There's a crazy statistic that tells me that 80% of our most rabid fans never ever go to a game. They never step foot in the stadium over the season. So we're not selling to our most rabid fans, so who are we selling to? So we have to be creative in who we're reaching out to and who we're talking to, because if not, then we're not going to fill our stadiums. We're not gonna meet our goals. We're not gonna have the revenue we need to drive the development of the organization as a whole. Any questions? Okay, so, so does that all make sense to everybody? Now let me ask you another question because I know Troy wanted everybody to get five or six great ideas from each speaker. Has everybody been able to get five or six things that they're gonna be able to use tomorrow or the next day? And has, um, how do I wanna ask this question? Has the value, the return on investment that you're receiving from this been worth the investment in your time and energy? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on somebody here. What was one thing you, somebody's learned here today that they didn't think they would, they would know? That they shocked them? Chris, I know you got something for me. The depth of inside sales, right. And, and that's, and, right, I planted Chris sorta, so that's the, that I cheated. I knew that Chris was gonna say that. <laughs> but that's why making a, a more strategic sale is so valuable, and, I, you know, and I'm trying to stay close to my time because I know everybody's gonna get tired of hearing all of us because you've been here all day. But the depth of inside sales is maybe overstated in some cases, but not in every case. And it, that's why it's so vitally important for you to be creative in your ability to reach and talk to people, in your ability to be more targeted in what you do, to understand that the value you create for your fans and for the people who attend your events is unique and it's different and it's going to be different to each individual buyer and each group of buyers. And that if you capture that awareness and you, if you capture that attention from those people is going to make it easier to make those sales because cold calling and dialing for dollars and spraying and praying and smiling and dialing is less and less effective. So think about your value, understand who it is that your buyer is, and be creative in how you're going to reach them. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Anybody, any questions? Anybody have a situation that they're dealing with? Because I actually cut myself short because Troy was telling me he was running over. <laughs> Anybody? Are there other ways you've reached out? Because you said you want us to think outside the sure. box. Sure. What are some examples of things that you consider that you've heard of or that you've done that are outside the box besides just uh, calling, email, I think a new one everybody's using on LinkedIn? Okay. Well, it depends who it is, right? I mean, that's the, the, and that's part of the challenge to you is it depends who it is. Um, I was fortunate uh, earlier I listened to, uh, um, and this is not my story, so, uh, but I'm going to share it with you because I thought it was great because we have a, a common friend. So there was a guy, John Rulin and Ruby, uh, was it Ruby Newell Ledger had a uh, customer engagement seminar that I sat in on earlier. And John is in um, the, the book that I was just talking about, uh, How to Get a Meeting with Anyone. Uh, he did a, a, this thing where he had a really high potential multi-million dollar buyer who really loved Brooks Brothers, and he's Canadian, and he don't really, didn't at the time have Brooks Brothers in Canada. And he had this, this potential buyer, this potential client, client's uh, hotel room outfitted like a Brooks Brothers store. And he won multiple, multiple million dollar business from that. 
that's, that's one. I have used the one where, when I was working with American Express, I took the entire team out to the Red Sox game because I, I needed to win them over, right? Because I, I was undifferentiated. So I, I've used that to reach the buyer. Um, some, of my other, some of the people I know, I've, um, you know, they'll speak, they'll, another one I'll use is articles. I write a lot. That way that gives me the ability to engage with buyers that I might not otherwise have the opportunity to talk to. Um, I also, um, other ones that are very effective is maybe a gift, right? The thing with the Marlins that was, worked very well for them where they sent a base with a note on it. Um, you know, with sports properties, you have a lot of opportunities like that. It's, um, we, we threw around the idea the other day, it's like if you have a really multi-year, multi-million dollar opportunity, maybe it makes sense to have one of your star players come along as a, uh, a tool or have them have a meet, come pop in on a meeting at the stadium when you're talking about that sponsorship because that might be a way to engage and get the, per, you know, get the person's attention in a different way to get them engaged. So the great thing about sports is that your, op, your ability to do that is just... Um, it's infinite. It's, it really is. Yes. I think the biggest challenge that everybody here faces is the need to understand that you're competing in a world of experiences and that the best way to utilize and grow your business is to focus on the experience and not in a way that is, um, you know, just kind of condescending to your, to your buyers and your, and your people. It's like to really focus on if this were me, if I were in their position, what would the, what do I want the experience to be like? Because you're not just competing against going to the game or not going to the game. You're competing against the experience at home. Um, you know, because we're here and D, you know, another DC guy is here, if you're, if you're competing against breweries and you're competing against a, a, a downtown that has like grown leaps and bounds and all of these restaurants and bars that are popping up, for many of you, that's the same situation. You're, you're fighting a constant battle to win the attention of people. Just like I said at the beginning, thank you for your attention because we're fighting for your attention the same way that everybody, you're fighting for your customer's attention. So the biggest challenge is not recognizing that it, you're selling an experience and that the experience is what's going to win you or lose you the guests. And I think I have time for one more because, yeah, okay, I have two minutes. Oh, that's the break. Anyone else? So, all right then, I, so I invite you all to connect with me. Um, I'm easy to find on LinkedIn. Um, you just look me up on Twitter, it's at David Wakeman. Um, oh, look at this. I told Troy I wouldn't give slides because everybody talks to the slides and they're like, oh, you know, this is great. But you can hit me, hit me on Twitter, find me on LinkedIn, um, connect with me, let, you know, let me know, you know, if I haven't given you two or three ideas that you can use tomorrow, let me know and I'm happy to do whatever it is to get you those two or three ideas. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>